Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and today we are going to cover some React fundamentals, specifically how to not render something. I've got this Create React app set up rendering a couple products. We've got a menu that right now doesn't work, but there's a bunch of things on each of these products that I don't want to show. For example, this comfy chair has five remaining, so why would I show sold out? This one down here has zero remaining, so why would I show the add to cart button? And maybe why would I even show this zero remaining? So these are the topics we're going to cover today, and it's all about controlling flow through your React application. So if I pull up this code here, I'll give a quick tour of what we're looking at. We've got a product component that's receiving a number of pieces of information as props, and one of those is the name, which I'm sort of splitting into two parts. Uh, the first part of it, for example, the plateau, and then the rest of it, meaning the comfy chair. So here I've got some, it's just returning some divs with different classes to make it, to make it look nice. Um, but there's a few things I don't want to show. So the first way to not show something is with an if statement. But there's a problem. You cannot put an if statement inside of JSX. For example, I cannot write in here an if statement of whatever I want to do because this is not valid JSX. So how do you use an if statement with inside a React app? And it's done by this. So here I've got an add to cart component which controls specifically this add to cart button at the bottom here. So what I'm passing to it is a Boolean value and it's based on whether remaining has over zero. So this arrives as available right here. So available is true or false. And I don't wanna show this add to cart button when there are none available. So the way you do an if statement in React is by taking it outside of your JSX. So in this case here, I can say if not available, because it's arriving as a Boolean, so I can just say if not available, I can return null. So now I'm able, and I could just as easily have put this in braces, it doesn't matter here, but um, now I'm able to use an if statement inside of React, and the key is to take it outside of JSX. So I'm essentially saying, if there's none available, return nothing. Else, I come down here and I just return this add to cart button. So if I come back here, I'm now not showing add to cart when there's no product available, when there's zero remaining. So that's the first way. And if statement is how you can not show something, but you have to do it outside of JSX. The second way you can not show something is by using a ternary statement. So a ternary sort of looks like this. It's saying if some condition is true, we do this, else we do that. So it sort of looks like this. We've got some conditional over here, question mark, this and that. So what we can do is we can embed this inside of our JSX. So what I'm going to do here is control whether we show the sold out, this red wing here, or the five remaining, this one here. So we will embed a conditional inside our JSX. So what I can say is, if remaining is zero, then what we can do is show sold out. Else, I can show the remaining. So if I paste that in, Prettier will auto format it, but I now have five remaining here and sold out here. So that's the second way to not show something in React, and it is to use a ternary. You can embed those in your JSX, and I could have just as easily um, said null here. So maybe I don't wanna show the quantity remaining. In that case, I'm um, actually hiding something or not rendering it with a ternary. But in this case, I do want to show the remaining, so we'll leave that in. So that's the second way. The third way is similar to a ternary, but it's called a short circuit um, operator. It's, it's sort of a bit of a hack. I don't even think it's called an operator, but we'll call it a short circuit. And I'll explain the idea behind this. 
If I'm writing an if statement and I have two conditions, so first condition and second condition. If the first condition is false, it will not even check the second condition because there's no need to check it. Um, because it's an and, they both have to be true for it to render something. So it, it skips the second. If the first is true, it will come and evaluate the second. And this sort of whole thing here returns um, true or false, but it say the second is a string, something. This is what ends up being returned if the first thing is true. And because this is truthy, it does evaluate to true in JavaScript. But we can sort of take this idea and hack it to have a short circuit displaying or not displaying something in React. So what we're going to do is handle this name rest. So it is the rest of the name. So that would be the comfy chair. But you can see here that in this chair, Elise does not have a rest. So we there's no sense in showing this span here if name rest doesn't have a value. So what we can do is we can say if name rest and that. So it's sort of a hack where we're we're saying check this first and if that is true return this. But if this is false, because it's short-circuited, it won't continue and therefore it won't return the span. So what we can do is just to, uh, to prove that that's true, I'll undo this quickly. We'll put the, the three letters ah there. So see, you can, you can say it is rendering ah there and ah here, but we, we want to hide this ah. So we'll come here and we'll use the short-circuit approach. So name rest and so only render this if name rest is true. And then we can see here, haha, <laughs> it's not working. So, and that is because I believe this is an empty array. So we'll say if uh, the length is greater than zero, there we go. So I'm too used to writing Ruby. Um, okay, so just to go over that again, if the length of the name rest, because this is an array, is greater than zero, then we want to show this um, name rest, and we're joining the array elements together again to show it as a string. So I'll just get rid of the ah uh, there. That was a big fail, no? <gasps> okay, let's keep going. So that's the third way, using short circuit approach. It's very similar to a ternary. I do want to mention a caveat. This does not work well in React Native. Because if this is false, it doesn't continue and return this uh, span here, what it actually returns is false. And in React Native, that will give you an error. It will say, I do not know how to render false. So what you would wanna do in React Native is actually switch this up to an actual ternary where you return null as its uh, sort of false um, side of the, the conditional. It, it ends up accomplishing the same thing. It's just sort of a, a shorter way of doing it. But keep in mind, it only works on React Web or React DOM, not React Native. So another way you can not show something in React is by playing with the style property. So I am not going to go too much in depth into this one. Um, but say I wanted to hide this chair here. What I could come and do is come into style, we're gonna play with the display property. And I could say if something is true, then we wanna have it displayed as a block, else we wanna have display as none. Just need to make sure this is an object like that. Cool. So here we're having it displayed because it's a block, but, um, sorry, because, because I said true, because it's always true, show it as a block. But let's say this conditional ended up being false. Now the chair would disappear. So in this case, it actually is rendering the image, but it's just not being shown to the user because the style attribute is saying display none. We'll get rid of that, but that is one way you can handle that. So the next way you can not show something is by playing with its CSS class name. So we're gonna skip down to a different um, 
component here called nav and that's this uh, lovely hamburger menu over here on the left but you can see this button does nothing it should sort of be hidden at the beginning and then when you click the the hamburger it pops open so we're going to play with the class names to have it uh, hide itself and show itself in this case it, it is always rendering it's just whether or not it's visible to the user or not that matters so what we'll do is we'll add some state here first so we will keep track of whether it is open or not and we'll use uh, react.use state for that we'll start it as closed so on its own it won't um, do anything because I haven't used this state but I can come down here and I want to add and remove this open class name so what we do is we switch this to something where we can embed logic and we will say if open we want to have the class um, open I believe it is and if not we can do no no class so because it starts off as false it is showing null as the class name and that's causing it to to not do anything to hide itself and the reason it is hidden is actually because nav on its own is positioned to the left so if I would change this the other way and just start sliding it you can see the nav sliding itself out so by adding back that open class it essentially changes the left property so that it slides open so we'll do that by adding an on click event to the button and when you click this button what we will do is set open to be the opposite of what it currently is so now when I click this um, hamburger it will toggle the open state causing this class name to toggle and that I uh, have a transition on it so it's animating in and out but by modifying this class name with state we are able to control whether something is rendered or not or in this case it is rendered but whether it's shown or not to the user so that's sort of five approaches to either not rendering it at all by uh, if statements and controlling the flow or by playing with the style and the class props to um, to be able to display it or not so how would you go about testing the presence or lack of presence or something using React Testing Library? For that, we're going to pop over to this app.test where I sort of have three stubs already uh, written out that do nothing yet. We're going to stop this React app. And um, actually, you know what? Why don't we pop open the terminal so we can see it right here below. So when this loads, I can say yarn test so that it starts uh, running this test. And it's saying three passing tests right now because they don't do anything, but mm -hmm. let's start playing with that. So uh, this won't be an intro to React Testing Library. I have another video for that. But what we want to do is render um, the add to cart uh, component. So first thing we're testing is the presence or something whether it's in the document or not so this test is whether it renders the cart button cart button when available so we will pass in available as true to sort of um that's why mimic that it is uh, is available so what's it saying here uh add to cart oh that was just the the one before so we'll run them again there we go. Okay, so what this gives us uh, back is get by text that will allow us to, to find out whether the cart is being rendered or not. So what we can do is maybe we will go up to our cart. We will look for this word cart here and we'll use that to determine whether it's being rendered or not. So what we can do now is we can say that we expect get by text when it finds cart to be in the document like that so it will run our tests it did not like it what did i do wrong unable to find an element with the word text ah that's because you had to 
you actually have to pass in the whole text. So what I can actually do is I can switch this to a regular expression where we find cart uh, case insensitive. So we can just look for partial um, forms of the word. And now it's passing again. So now let's test the opposite. So let's copy this down. And we want to pass in false. And what we can do is we can say expect get by text. We'll look for cart case insensitive search. And in this case, we can say to be null because it should not return something back. And what we're actually going to see is that it will fail. And that is because get by text always expects to find something. So we can't actually use it in this case because we don't expect to find something. So what we can do instead is instead of get by text, we can do query by text. And query allows it to not be found. So it won't be found and then we expect that to be null, which is perfect. So that's how you can test for um, something not existing inside of your document or being rendered by your component. The last thing we're going to test is basically looking at how we controlled whether or not our nav had a class of open or not. We can actually test to see if an element has a class using React Testing Library. So again, we will say const and we'll render this time the nav like that. And we are going to use a finder function from a React Testing Library called getByTestID. Um, and what this is, if we go to the nav, it allows us to find an element using this test ID that I've added to both our nav and the button here. Um, because they're a little bit hard to find, otherwise I can just find it by nav or hamburger here to find the button. So the first thing I want to do is I want to test that it uh, does not have the class open because that's sort of the way it starts. So I can say expect and I'll say get by test ID the nav uh, not to have um, class open like that. So it's passing. So we find the element nav using this finder function. We convert it to the opposite, to not, to have the class open. So now we need to basically trigger or simulate a click on this button that will update the state and cause it to render again with um, a class of open on it. So what we can do is I've, uh, I've imported fire event. So we can say fire event, we want to fire the click event, and we want to fire the click event on the hamburger button. So once we've done that, it should have updated the state and toggled it. So now we can say expect get by test ID, expect the nav, this time to have a class of open. And it runs and it's able to find open this time. So this, um, it's the fundamentals of React, right? It's how basically to control whether or not something was rendered or not in your component. And we covered a few approaches. We covered if statements to, to flat out return null if we don't want to render something. We covered embedding ternaries right inside of our JSX. We covered using a short circuit to avoid, to only render sort of the, the right side of the conditional if the, the left side is true. We looked at quickly how to add style to display something or not um, in a little bit of a contrived example, but we did that. And then we added an open class or we removed it by state to toggle something using CSS animations. And then finally, we came inside of the test file and we tested for the, the presence of an element, the non-presence of an element, and then we tested whether or not something has a class. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love for you to subscribe. I'll be doing lots of videos about React, JavaScript. Um, hope to do some videos on Next.js coming up soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.